Or if I get the cups, sir. Ah, yes, carry on, Corporal. I think they're all finished. Thank you, sir. I say, she really goes, doesn't she? Pretty toy. It's a jolly useful toy. Like the real thing? The Chieftain's no toy. No? Best tank in the business. Yes, I suppose so. Now. One to a millimetre gun, accurate over the worst country, and it's astonishingly comfy for a tank. And what makes you think we'll need tanks in the brave new army of the 70s? We'll always need tanks. I wonder. That's what you said about your horses. <laughs> yes, a pity about the nags. But look here, you foot sloggers have been jolly pleased to see us on occasion. Oh, in conventional warfare, yes. But tanks won't be much use in the future, not in the kind of campaign we are studying here. Can't you understand the implications? Yes, well, I suppose I ought to. God knows I've been on enough of these damn strategic studies courses. Then how on earth can you go rabbiting on about we'll always need tanks? Look, my dear old chap, war is war now or in 20 years' time. Only infantry supported by tanks can seize and hold ground. In this kind of war? Is this the kind of war you want? I can't say I'm really bothered what kind of war it is. A chap only gets killed once. I can't see it makes much difference how. Well, Geoffrey, the Russians use horses at Leningrad. Think you'll find use for them in this kind of campaign? Well, it's jolly nice of you to think of it, sir. But you see, um, fodder would be the problem in this day and age. The poor beasts would never get their oats. We do our best. What do you think of the course? Uh, jolly interesting, sir. You, Charles? Absolutely fascinating, sir. And? If you really want to know, sir, it turns my stomach. Oh. Yeah, yes, well, I, I wouldn't actually go as far as saying it gave me tummy trouble, sir, but um, isn't it all a bit hypothetical? I mean, it might never happen. They didn't use gas in the 39-45 war, and so far no one's used the bomb, have they? Well, except in Japan. So you're protagonist for the continuance of conventional warfare, are you, Geoffrey? Yes, you might say so, sir. Unlike Charles here, he thinks tanks are obsolete now. I did not well, say Well, that's that. one of the things we're here to find out, isn't it? Thank you, sir, and Muggs. No, oh, don't tell me they're finished in there at last. And they've all had their coffee. Still fighting the next war, eh? That's right. Kids' toys. I'll have to pack it in soon. It's nearly dinner time. Time I was off home. Oh, wife on. will create. I'll oh, hang on here if you want to go. No, no, I've got to lock the classified stuff away. Maps and papers and that. Oh, I can do that. No, you can't. It's my responsibility. Not Captain Benson's. Well, I've got the keys. I see. Thanks all the same, Corporal, but you ought to know better than ask. Even if you are new here. Sorry. That's all right. All right, you can go as soon as they're dismissed. Thanks, Sarge. The type of warfare we're discussing is probably new to some of you. Even disturbing, perhaps. And for those who think it, there's nothing hypothetical about the work we're doing here. Thank you, Geoffrey. It's a realistic approach to ground warfare as it undoubtedly will be fought within the next decade. All right, gentlemen, that's all for today. We move on to Southeast Asia tomorrow. Thank you for your attention. See you at dinner. Charles, you're covering Cambodia, is it, tomorrow? Yes, sir, the war of 1984. You were still too well prepared. I don't want my chaps acting up like the gunner this morning. Waste of time. Fellow hadn't done his homework. Colonel, I... Yes, Charles, what is it? I've done my homework, sir. May I have a word, sir? Oh, Smith, yes, walk me over to the mess, will you? I'll carry on, sir. All right, son, Moggs, if you don't mind. I'd better get across to the mess to change for dinner. Here's the checklist. Oh, thank you, sir. Have you organised that map for tomorrow? Yes, sir, already. Good. Reminds me of the old days, sir. All those tactical courses out in Cyprus. Only not quite. The scope's rather greater. Ah, everything gets so complicated, more's the pity. More's the pity, indeed. You can see some practical results from those courses. They weren't just theory. Nope. Uh, we've seen some action together, you and me, haven't we? Suez, Cyprus, Kenya. And weren't you out in Indonesia? Sergeant, I was. Uh, orderly room sergeant's a good number, but I'd give anything to drop a few years, you know, and get back in the field again. Would you? Oh, well, perhaps not. Yeah, it's time you were off, sir. Yes. 
You manage, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Good night. Good night, sir. I hope they're not going to make a habit of this sort of thing, sir. Upsets the routine in barracks, all these visiting officers about the place. I thought I said you could go. You did. Then why haven't you? you? Seemed a pity to leave all this until morning. Mm. All right. You may as well carry on now you're here. Here's the door key. Don't forget to lock it up and hand it in the guard room. Right. Good night. Good night, sir. patrol got cut off. Well, he'd lost his compass, and being a typical brigade type, he'd never learned how to read a map properly. So he said, there's only one thing for it, chaps, you'd better dig in. Which was just as well, because there was a lot of mortar and machine gun fire flying around. So they all dug their little slit trenches, and Willie was crouching in his, and he suddenly saw somebody walking around in the middle of all this. So he called out to him and said, hey there, get your head down, do you want to get it shot off? The chap just went on walking around. So he called out again and said, Look here, you silly idiot. Get under cover. No reaction. Chap just went on walking around. So they thought, oh, my gosh, I'll have to do something about this. He charged across this bit of open ground with machine gun bullets kicking up the dust at his heels, grabbed hold of this chap by the shoulders, shook him like a terrier shakes a rat, and said, you stupid... Suddenly realised it was a very high-ranking German officer. So he stepped back and threw him up a cracking salute and said, I say, I'm most frightfully sorry, sir. I thought you were on our side. <laughs> <laughs> That's rather in your court, isn't it, Admiral? Well, it's a bit before my time. I was a national serviceman, but in the brigade. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. The regulars were quite charming to us. Blues or tins? Good God, no. Grenadiers, why? Oh, the horses. Mm. True. And from what you were saying earlier, I should have thought... Yes, but if I was in the cavalry, I'd have had to go about in tanks, armoured cars, wouldn't I? Besides, they're a very frivolous mob, you know. <laughs> and you've got the gravity of the foot. Well, of course, I had a very good upbringing in Westdale, Colonel. I remember as a boy, the regiment marching through the town. Drums, fifes, sprig of heather in their hats. Balaclava day, wasn't mm. it? They're probably going to stop it soon. Why? Well, the traffic? Ah. Till the bypass is built, the police say they won't be able to cope. I say that's not on, is it, Colonel? You can't have traditions killed off for a load of blasted trucks. Well, more than traditions are going these days. That's why I rather envy your fellows, Hadley. Really, Colonel? Yes, well, the brigade isn't likely to be chopped or even amalgamated. Ah, no, no, that's true. But surely the West Elves aren't in danger, are they? We're all going, one by one. All the old line regiments. Or oh, even the cavalry, Colonel. Amalgamate but keep the names. We'll probably end up as the 3rd, 5th, 17th, 21st Lancer Dragoon Hussars. And if the Queen's Bays and the Scots Greys get together, probably with piebald ponies. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we're all going to end up driving guided missiles vehicles. Oh, but there'll always be tanks, surely. And there'll always be the West Isles. You know, I can't help thinking that 170 years of tradition ought to mean something. Now, some of the older line regiments have already gone. Well, save the West Isles. Huh? If it comes to the crunch, you wouldn't find it too difficult, would you, Colonel, to start a campaign? Well, it's a thought. Might help. We've got the battle honours. Peninsula, Sam, India, Crimea, Egypt, wherever we had a war... The regiment was there. A great and glorious history. What does it all mean now? Past is no answer to the present, sir. That's a bit too deep for me, Charles. What are you trying to say? Perhaps Captain Benson doesn't approve of tradition. On the contrary, Major Smith, I was brought up on tradition. No, oh, I just wonder whether the men who followed these colours would be so proud if they knew what we were up to today. Your father, at least, would have had no doubt. Regiment, right or wrong? Benson's father used to command the regiment. Oh, yes, of course, Benson. No, no, there is nothing wrong with tradition. I mean, soldier against soldier, there's 
honour in that. What are we becoming today? Some kind of vast extermination unit. When we calmly talk about germs and atomic overkill... Chuck. No, sir, excuse me, just a minute. Sir, that is all it takes. That amount of chemical in the right place is far more effective than Hiroshima, and that is only the Charles, beginning, you're sir. talking too much shop. You're boring, I guess. Coffee in the anteroom, Hadley, when you want it. Thank you. Yes, well... JP, aren't you? Yes, yes, sir. Do you enjoy it? No, but then I didn't take it on to enjoy it. Mostly fining poachers and motorists, I imagine. Well, motorists, yes, but there are very few small poachers these days. Really? I must confess I'm out of touch with the bucolic pastimes. Are you at the War House, I? The Ministry of Defence. Ah. I'm an admin waller. What's an admin waller doing on a strategic studies course? I'm just keeping in touch. Thank you. Could you excuse me? Yes. Charles, just the man. What about a spot of poker? Not tonight, Geoffrey, if you don't mind. I'm going home. Snap, beg him a neighbour, take your mind off the world's problems. All right, a couple of hands. Poker. That's my boy. Pat, I'm terribly sorry. I'm neglecting you. Don't you sit down. How about a drink? You've got a rather nice and best brand. Thank you. Bring two branders, will you? Yes. You've also got a very nice mass. Yes, we're rather fond of it. You were serious, weren't you, about the West Hills being disbanded? Inevitable, I'm afraid. 170 years of history thrown on the rubbish heap. We shall fight it, of course. Will it do any good? Perhaps not. But we shan't retreat, even though it's our last battle. And we'll be going outside the regiment for some help. If a campaign were started, we could count on you, couldn't we? We have petitions of the things these days. You've got a newspaper. Save the West End. I see, that's what you're after, is it, Colonel? Well, of course, I'll be delighted to help if I can. Excuse me, Colonel. Uh, may I have a word? Yes, of course. Hang on a moment. Yes, of course. Could you spare some minutes? Why? What's the trouble? I'd rather explain in here. Your deal, Charles. Your deal. Sorry, Geoffrey, my mind's just not on it tonight. What do you mean, your mind's not on it? You've won every blasted hand so far. I'm down about a fiver already. Yes, I promise you your revenge. Tomorrow night? It's all right, if you insist. Extraordinary fella. This police officer would like to speak to you. Ah, yes, I know, Sergeant Peters. What can I do for you? I'm afraid I shall have to ask you to sign a search warrant, sir. Oh? What are the premises you're intending to search? A civilian flat, occupied by a Sergeant Moggs. Serving with this regiment, sir. Well, then it's a regimental matter, sir. I'm afraid it's rather more serious than that, sir. Sergeant Moggs is suspected of removing yeah. official papers from the barracks. Surely the military police can... He's have... living on civilian premises, sir. There may be charges under the Official Secrets Act. It is a police matter. Not a court-martial. It depends how the Attorney General wants to play it. Well, if evidence is found, there may be a preliminary hearing in a magistrate's court. Your court, Mr. Hatley. You've really considered this, haven't you? Uh, these documents that he's supposed to have stolen, what exactly... I'm afraid we can't disclose that, sir. They're highly confidential. Well, you're not disclosing very much. It isn't necessary to do so, is it? Under the Act. Is this what you want? I'm afraid Whitehall decides these things. All right, Sergeant, give me a pen. Thank you, sir. We'll uh, let you know what happens. Yes, I very much hope you will. Good night, sir. Good night. Who is that fellow? He's from one of the new Ministry of Defence departments. 
I can't keep track of them. Don't ask me who he is. Look, Hadley, I'm terribly sorry. This is not the way to treat a guy. Oh, that's all right. It's all part of a JP's life. Mind you, it's not part that I like very much. I always wonder whether the fellow's really guilty. I suppose a cert proves it one way or the other. Yes, but if he's innocent, how do you think he feels? His house turned upside down with his wife and family looking on. Yes, look, come on, let's have that drink. No, I want a complete rundown. James Hadley, JP. Hadley with a G-H. Yes. The Crown against Henry Moggs. You can stay with your solicitor. You needn't go into the dock. You're Henry Moggs, a sergeant of the Yorks and Westdale Fusiliers? Yes, sir. And you're employed as orderly room sergeant of the battalion? Yes, sir. You're charged under Section 3 of the Official Secrets Act of 1920, as amended in 1939. In that, between the hours of 6 and 6.30 on the evening of June the 5th this year, you removed certain documents from the Gallipoli Barracks in Westdale, knowing the said documents to be of a highly confidential nature and the sole property of the Crown. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Not guilty, sir. Mm, sit down, Sergeant. Thank you, sir. I prefer to stand. Sergeant, you are not on company orders now. Sit down. Is the defendant represented in court? I appear for the defendant. Morning, Mr. Jackson. Morning, sir. I appear for the prosecution, Your Worship. Yes, Sir Hilary Winters. We don't often have such eminent advocates in West End. Your Worship is very gracious. I meant rather large guns for such a small target. <coughs> we regard this as a very serious case for which the police inquiries are not yet completed. You appear to have an assistant? Major Smith is assisting the Crown, Your Worship. As I said, the police are still making inquiries into this case. There may be further charges. At this stage, therefore, we request that the defendant be remanded in custody. Yes, I gather you've got evidence to support this plea. Of course. I just want to establish that there are certain features of this case which affect the national interest. For this reason, it is only possible for me to present the briefest details here. These official secrets charges can be very tricky, sir. So it appears, Mr. Sampson. The prosecution has all kinds of powers. I think I should advise you to go along with them. Mm. Well, it seems to me that they decided to bring this case into my court. Thank you, Mr. Sampson. All right, Sir Henry. Thank you, Your Worship. I have written statements from two witnesses which I would like to put in evidence. Unless the defence wishes to cross-examine them, I see no reason to call the witnesses at this stage. My first is from Corporal Richard Bennett. He states that on the evening in question, he saw the defendant place certain documents of a highly confidential nature into a briefcase and remove that briefcase from the conference room in the Gallipoli barracks. Yes. Is Corporal Bennett with the Westdale Fusilier? Well, uh, not exactly. How not exactly? He was sec uh, seconded to the regiment recently. My next witness... Where from? Your Worship. Where was he seconded from? From the Ministry of Defence headquarters in London. From Major Smith's department, perhaps? I believe that is correct. Matters of internal security of a purely routine nature, of course, do come under that department. And that department is military mm. intelligence, is it? Yes, Your Worship. Yes. Thank you very much, sir. Please continue. My next witness is Inspector Frost of the Special Branch at Scotland Yard. He states that in the company of Police Sergeant Peters, he searched the accused flat later that night and found the briefcase, but the documents have been removed. And where are those documents now? The defendant refuses to say what he did with them. In fact, he refuses to say anything about the matter at all. Do you want to say anything at this moment, Mr. Jackson? We prefer to reserve our defence, Your Worship. In that case, I ask that the defendant be remanded in custody whilst further inquiries are made. Very well, I order the defendant no to this. Sergeant Moggs gave the documents to me. Yes. Captain if you Benson. Don't know what happened, Captain I can Benson. tell you. I, told I want Sergeant him in the box. To we can't call him, but the defendant can. I can't can. take evidence from a man who isn't in the witness box. Tell that fellow Jackson that I want Benson in the box now. <laughs> Come here, 
here of your own accord to give evidence on behalf of the accused in this case. I have. Uh, may I ask why you've only just come forward? Because I only just heard about all this nonsense. It only happened last night. Quite. It seems that the prosecution has been a trifle impetuous in bringing this case so quickly. Damned fools, if you ask me. Yes, you weren't asked, Captain Benson. Uh, Mr. Jackson, if you'd kindly confine your remarks to eliciting facts. I apologise, Your Worship. You say that Sergeant Moggs took the documents referred to under express instructions from you. Yes. He was merely carrying out an order given to him by an officer, in fact. Yes. And later in the evening, you visited Sergeant Moggs at his flat and took the papers back from him. I did. Why didn't you take them from the conference room yourself? I had to go straight from the conference room to the officer's mess for dinner. I didn't want to leave them lying about the mess, and I knew that they'd be safe with Sergeant Moggs. I see. Uh, one last question. Why did you want the documents? I intended to do some work on them at home later that night. I live out of barracks, you see, some way out of Westdale. Thank you, Captain Benson. You've been very helpful. In view of this evidence, Your Worship, I submit that there is no case for my client to answer. He was merely carrying out orders given to him by a superior officer. Sir Hillary? My only colleague may be right, but there are just a few questions I would like to ask Captain Benson first. Very well. Thank you, Your Worship. I won't keep you a moment, Captain Benson. Just a few points you may be able to clear up for us. I'll try. You say that you live some way from the barracks. Yes, at Friarthorpe Manor. It belonged to my father. The uh, late Lieutenant Colonel Benson. Yes. As a serving officer in his old regiment, a man of whom you must have been very proud. Yes, I am. Just so. You probably find it less expensive living out of barracks. Well, that's part of it. Oh. Do you have any other income apart from your officer's pay? I fail to see the relevance of these questions, Your Worship. Yes, I rather agree with you, Mr. Jackson. I don't mind answering the question. No, I haven't. I live on my pay. Well, we'll let that pass. Now, these documents. Living closer to Sergeant Moggs and to the barracks, you probably thought it easy to pick them up from him instead of going all the way back there. Exactly. Why didn't you pick them up from the conference room after dinner? It was all locked up. It would have meant turning out the guard and finding the man who had the keys. And you didn't want to put them to that trouble. Very considerate of you. You've known Sergeant Moggs for some time, I believe. Ever since I joined the regiment, 17 years ago. He was my first platoon sergeant. I see. You were comrades in arms, in fact. Rather a high-flown phrase, but you could put it that way. I put it that way, Captain Benson, because it seems curious in the light of what you've told us. The Sergeant Moggs didn't say from the start that he took those papers on your behalf. He might have felt a sense of loyalty. A sense of loyalty? Not a very fashionable trait these days, I agree. And rather misguided in this case, wouldn't you say? Perhaps. Well, I think it was. To lay himself open to serious charges and not say anything to justify his actions. I asked him not to tell anyone about it. Because you knew it was a serious offence to remove those papers from the barracks. A technical offence, perhaps. It rather depends on the reason for removing them. Now... I believe that you and Sergeant Moggs both served together in Cyprus some years ago. Amongst other places, yes. But it was in Cyprus that this regiment was frequently in action. Is it true that on one occasion you were instrumental in recovering Sergeant Moggs after he had been wounded on a patrol? That has nothing to do with all this. I agree, Your Worship. This has got nothing to do with the present case. Is my learned friend making an objection? Well, not exactly. You can leave it to me to address the solicitor for the defence when it's necessary. Of course, Your Worship. I was only trying to establish that Sergeant Moggs may have had good reason for this display of loyalty towards Captain Benson, even to the extent of trying to cover up for him. Nonsense. Very well. Now, to return to these papers. You say that you wanted to work on them at home. Yes. And did you? Did you work on them? I started to. You started to? I was in my father's old study. He used to work there. It's just as he left it. Campaign maps on the walls, portraits of his old friends, all the things that meant so much to him. You were working on the papers, and then? It was degrading even having them in that room. I suddenly felt how obscene they were. Obscene? Yes. So I burnt them. You burnt them? Of course, and I'll tell you why. That won't be necessary, thank you. But Captain I intend Benson. that you shall hear why. I have no further questions. Because they were about the kind witness. of war this country is planning to fight in the future. War! Extermination, we should call it. Using disease to wipe out whole populations. We are supposed to be soldiers, not 
bloody chemists. Your Worship, I must... People protest. have a right to know what is being done yes, in their name. Sir. Do you have any idea what plans they have for this country if we are subjected to germ warfare? It's a nightmare. Whole areas to be sterilised. Atomic weapons to be used against our own. Why, it's in them hard. Please. Your Worship, I should recommend that a transcription of this trial be sent to the Director of Public Prosecutions. I imagine that Captain Benson will face charges under the Official Secrets Act. The court is adjourned. Clear the room. Court is adjourned. Please clear the court. Just routine, you said. A simple preliminary hearing in a provincial magistrate's court. No fuss. I hadn't bargained for a man like him on the bench. And I think it's time I put Hadley in the picture. Oh, it's not a mark. Stand easy. You've been a flaming idiot, haven't you? Yes, sir. A man of your service, you ought to know better. Do you think you were helping Captain Benson by keeping quiet about it? I don't know, sir. It's the sort of thing we can take care of ourselves. Now look, a court case, the press churning it up. God knows where it's going to end. I'm very sorry, sir. Well, one good thing, the police charges against you have been dropped. Oh, yes, sir. But you'll be on orders tomorrow morning. Yes, sir. Consider yourself under open arrest. Yes, of course, sir. Well, that's all, Marks. Oh, sir. Uh, Captain Benson, sir. I was wondering what's going to happen to him. I hate to admit it, but as from this moment, Captain Benson is strictly on his tongue. Well? Well what? <laughs> Repressed rage and fury. Had a bad day at the factory. Factory? What are you talking about? The justice factory. The uh. court. Oh, come on, I do know about it. Our most junior reporter was there. Most excited he was. Was he? Oh, come on, tell. You know, there are times when I just wish I'd never taken this appointment. <laughs> Today is one of those times. I gather some officer went mad in court or something and let out a lot of secret stuff. No, he didn't go mad. He might be heading for a nervous breakdown, but that's not what matters. What matters is I'm fairly certain that I'm being used. What, you as James Hadley or you as the J.P.? No, me as the J.P. If it hadn't been me, it would have been one of the others. How do you mean you're being used? Prove it. We don't normally have a high-powered QC in the Westdale court, for one thing. Mm, true. The office picked up its collective ears when it heard that one. One of those arrogant types who thinks he's only got a bunch of half-baked provincials to deal with. Oh, I wish I'd been there. I bet you enjoyed yourself. Knowing my mind, you wrong me. <laughs> no, you don't. There was some satisfaction in quietly clobbering him. The guiltiness of my mind, the sudden surprise of my oh, powers. Oh, hello. I did it for my A-level. Yeah, well, that was it. What was it? The sudden surprise of my powers. I suddenly realised I hadn't got any. Because the case came under the Official Secrets Act. Mm, as the, court of the, the clerk, clerk of the court said, the prosecution has very wide powers. I'll be judge, I'll be jury, said cunning old Fury. I'll try the whole cause and condemn you to death. Alice In, in Wonderland. And that's exactly where I am. It was all right for him. What else, Sir George? The original Fury, from what I've heard. He had real power. He didn't have a bunch of military intelligence boys carving up his court. Yeah, not only a silk, but MI5. Or was it six? Westdale has been honoured. I think we're going to go on being honoured until they get their way. And you, of course, propose to stay in their way. No, I just want evidence. Direct evidence. I have no intention of being obstructed. Oh, from where they sit, it must look rather as if you have. Have they tried to twist your arm yet? No, not yet, but I've no doubt that'll be the next step. There's a Major Smith on the phone, sir. He wants to come over and see you. Says it's urgent. So you've charged Captain Benson? Under the Official Secrets Act. With making a disturbance in court? Oh, we have been watching him for some time. And you now want me to commit him? right. Yes, well, before I do that, I've got to be certain there's a case to answer. You've already made one mistake over Sergeant Moggs. Well, it served its purpose. You mean you wanted Benson in the witness box? You heard the outburst in court. Yes, of course, it was true, what he said. You realise that anything I tell you is highly confidential. And comes under the Official Secrets Act. Which you have signed. Yes, but not read. The Ministry of Defence are holding a course at Westdale Barracks. A strategic studies course. Well, in simple terms, this is an assessment of how wars may be fought in 10 or 20 years' time. 
From the recommendations of these courses, our scientific people decide into which areas to direct their research. Research into weapons? Yes. Like bacterial missiles? Well, it could be. Seems to me that Benson had a point. Well, these things exist, Hadley. It's no good pretending that they don't. Yeah. Look, what exactly is Benson guilty of? Having a conscience because he doesn't like the dirty work he's doing. People who hold views like Benson's are a number one security risk. Now, I honestly believe that when Benson took those papers, he didn't know what the hell he was going to do with them. Work on them, as he said. Or perhaps hand them over to a foreign power for the sake of humanity, like Fuchs and some of the other scientists. Well, at least you're not suggesting he's selling them. <laughs> the people who sell out for money are no problem. We welcome them. You welcome them? What for? Your moral satisfaction? No. They're easier to catch. And they are far less dangerous than the idealists. The trouble with people like Benson is you never know what's going on in their mind. Well, it isn't very difficult to guess since he burned the documents in disgust. So he says. But how do we know that? Those documents could be anywhere now. Peking, perhaps. Well, you'll just have to prove that, won't you? What would you suggest, subpoena Chairman Mao? No, just find out whether he did burn the documents or whether he didn't. You're saying he's guilty unless he proves himself innocent. Well, he's guilty by his own admission. What of having an opinion you don't like? Of wanting to air it in public. So you want me to lock him up for what he might do next? <clears throat> I had hoped that I could make you understand. This is not an ordinary criminal case and the ordinary rules do not apply. Well, I think they do. You brought this case into my court and you're going to have to give me something more substantial than personal suspicion. I think not, Hadley. If I may give you a word of advice, I suggest you examine your own position in this case very carefully. You can't win, and you have a great deal to lose. No. I want you to lose the exclusive. Oh, Frank. Frank, we both love the paper, and it's great to have an exclusive, but, well, I want you to give it to the Nationals. To get public sympathy for Benson, of course. Yeah, well, James is going to need all the help he can get. <laughs> Don't be silly. Of course he doesn't know I'm asking you. He's dashed off to London this morning. Yeah, to see someone he knows at the Attorney General's office. These official secrets cases are the very devil. So I've found out. You're extraordinarily unlucky, James, to have caught a case like this. Most JPs never get near them. So I wish I hadn't. It's opened my eyes. How? Oh, well, I had no idea the whole thing was... Oh, excuse me, will you? Yes. Sir Timothy Waite. Yes? Yes. I'm sorry I have someone with me. By all means. Yes, yes, of course I will. Goodbye. Oh, I can't think what my secretary's doing. I'm sorry about that, James. Now, where were we? Well, in effect, I just got damned angry with this military intelligence chair. Ah. See, as I see it, when I'm in court, I'm concerned with the law. Well, these fellows just seem to think they can walk all over it. Yes, these security people take a hell of a lot on themselves sometimes. Or so it can appear. Still, they have a very difficult job to do. Yeah, well, it's made a damn sight easier by the Official Secrets Act. There seems no limit to it. It's a denial of human rights. After you phoned me, James, I got a copy of Lord Parker's ruling in a recent official secrets trial. Good. I take it that's a definitive, is it? You can take it as such. Now, let me see. Ah, yes. Insofar as matters relating to the safety of the realm and the command of the royal forces are not regulated by statute, is that clear? Mm, if there's no statute, matters come under common law. Good. In fact, it goes on. The powers in that regard are at common law in the prerogative of the crown. Shall I go on? Yes. Acting on the advice of its servants, which has unfettered control, that is the crown, of well, course. Well, that means the crown can just walk all over common law. Well, not exactly. Listen. The crown has unfettered control both in times of peace and war of all matters relating to the disposition and armament of the military, naval and air forces. All matters, note. Yes. And the manner of the exercise of such prerogative powers cannot be inquired into by the courts, whether in a civil or criminal case. But that's fantastic. That's the ruling. 
Well, that means the Crown can do just what it like, and I can't do anything about it. So it would appear. Well, then the court's hands are just tied. They're hamstrung. I suppose it's felt that the interests of the state come first. Oh, God, I wish I'd never heard that phrase. I notice we're never told what those interests are. Well, that's part of it, perhaps. That the public shan't hear what might upset them unnecessarily. So you can do nothing? I'm afraid not. Well, thank you for seeing me, Tim. I might as well go back to Wester. Oh, no, wait, James. Look, why not let the case take its proper course? It's not as if you've got to sit in judgment on this fellow yourself. Just pass the case on to a higher court and be shot of it. Like Pontius Pilate? Yes, we'll see the trouble he saved himself. Did he? We're still talking about him after 2,000 years. Look, tell me this. Why did they bring this case into my court? They had a choice. Yes, a serviceman can be tried either under military or civil law. Even under both until a few years. Well, in Benson's case, surely a court-martial would have been better. Less publicity, for one thing. Yes, that's the point I rather fancy. You mean they wanted publicity? The security people have made a few boobs recently. They want to prove that they're on the ball, impress our NATO friends, especially the Americans. Well, just a guess, of course. Yes, of course. What are you going to do, James? Well, what I have to do. And what's that? Well, when a man pleads not guilty, it's my job to find out whether there's a case to answer or not, isn't it? Yes. But you don't think that there is one here? Well, I don't know. I just want to hear some evidence. Perhaps that's what Benson wants. What do you mean? To use the court's proceedings to publicise his ideas. Well, maybe they should be publicised. And anyway, I was always told that justice has to be seen to be done. James, I wish you'd change your mind. In this one case, let it go. Why? There are... Rather a lot of complicated factors involved. I thought this wasn't in your line. Yes, this business of official secrets covers us all. I'd hate to see you get hurt because of all this. Hurt? It could go very far. Well, as far as suggesting that I'm in league with Benson? Or a Soviet agent? It might be suggested that you have an ulterior motive. At the very least, an acquittal would avoid a rather unpleasant scandal for his regiment, a regiment with which you have very close connections. In fact, not very close. They might appear so if the press were tipped off. Have you been told to warn me off? I'm speaking as a friend. Yes. Think about it, James, will you? There's nothing to think about. Goodbye, Tim. I'm sorry to have wasted your time. Court tomorrow for a preliminary hearing. So I'm told. You'll plead not guilty, I suppose. That is my privilege. Ah, then you'll be able to get it all off your mind, won't you? All those dark little secrets. Maybe. I know what's going on in your head, Benson. You expect a wide hearing with the press there. Of course. You'll be found guilty, you know, at the trial. Got it all fixed, have you? Because you are guilty. Of believing people have a right to know what's going on? Oh, yes, that's what it's all about, isn't it? You really think that your forecast of Armageddon is going to make people any happier? If enough people know, perhaps something will be done about it. Or will it just cause them to panic and cause the very thing that you're trying to prevent? People aren't as stupid as you seem to think, Major Smith. They've already got a pretty good idea of what to expect in any future war. Oh, yes, there's words. Atomic weapons, germ warfare. Words they've come to accept and live with, all mixed up with a kind of science fiction fantasy. But you want to spell it out for them, don't you? You want to make the fantasy come real. Look what your vivid imagination has done for you. What gives us the right to be the only ones who know? That's a very naive question, Captain Benson. Where does your loyalty lie? Are you frightened by your glimpse into the future? Aren't you? Yes, yeah, of course. There's no shame in that. 
And you want to ease your fear, don't you, by sharing it with everybody else? You haven't got the guts to face it alone. I've got the guts to go to prison for letting people decide for themselves. If you felt like that about it, why didn't you send in your papers? That would have been a negative gesture. Oh, why? Always attack from a position of strength, Major Smith. As an ex-officer, who'd listen to me? As a serving soldier, the press will jump at it. Hmm. And we shall slap a D-notice on it. It's not easy to be a martyr, is it? As long as there are dirty jobs to do, I suppose somebody can be found to do them. My war is already being fought. It may be nasty sometimes, but so far it's managed to prevent an even nastier one. Your one. I'm just being practical in my own way. Practical? But you're not even that, you see. A matter of opinion. No, fact, Captain Benson. Fact. You don't really expect a public hearing, do you? That's the right of any defendant. Oh, no, Benson, not in a case like this. Not when it's a question of safeguarding the national interest. You cannot this deny This hearing them. will be held in a closed court. And so will the trial afterwards. No press and no public to hear that impassioned little speech on behalf of humanity that you've been working on. In the national interest. Some other countries you'd have just been quietly liquidated. Little motor accident, perhaps. Nothing simpler. That at least is honest. Yes. Well, we're getting off the point. And what is the point, since I'm to be so effectively muzzled? Question of three years or 14 years, that's the range of sentence for the charges you face. Quite a range. Covers a wide variety of guilt. Blake, you may remember, got 42 years. Three consecutive sentences of 14 years. And what's the deciding factor in my case? How long before I'm out again to say what I want to say? Because I will, you know, one day. You can't shut me up forever. Oh, I think three years should be enough. By that time, any knowledge that you do have will be out of date. Past history, no one will want to know. Well, do you understand? You have a choice. Plead guilty, take a sentence of three years. Plead not guilty and the sentence could be 14 or multiples thereof. I'll leave you to think it over, Captain Benson. I'll be back to see you later. And by the way, if you have any feeling at all for your regiment, I suggest that you wear civilian clothes in court tomorrow. It was very decent of the colonel to let me dine here. I was getting rather depressed with the red lion in Westdale. Yes. Well, what about tomorrow? Have you seen Hadley? Now, worthy JP has been busy, too. He's been to London. He has friends, friends in high places. It's going to be difficult, I suppose. Well, he might try to be. You know, Hadley may be rather misguided, but I can't help admiring him. He must know what he's up against. I've already told him. Excuse me, sir, this just came. Urgent, I thought you better have it. Thank you very much, Richard. Good night, sir. Good night. This is the forensic department. The report on the ashes in Benson's fireplace. And? It was the Operation Damocles paper. And he burnt them, as he said. And he was telling the truth. Well, that doesn't matter, does it? Another time he might well pass them on. I sometimes wonder. It's better not to, you know. Would you excuse me? Major Smith. Sir. Sir, you're going ahead with it tomorrow. Yes, sir. You know what it's going to do to the regiment, don't you? The regiment? Now, don't be a burke or the publicity. I suppose it'll please the people who want to disband us. Is that why they're doing it this way? That's silly, sir. Is it? Another flag pulled down, another name forgotten, written off by the stroke of a Whitehall pen. The army must modernise like everything else. Modernise, yeah. You and your kind. I suppose you're necessary. You're fighting your war your way, but can't you see you're destroying us? Our loyalties and traditions. This Benson affair. The army has always looked after itself in its own way. Even when it comes to judging and sentencing. I don't think I understand this modern army of yours. I don't think I want to. Neither does Captain Benson. Mm -hmm. I'm beginning to see what he meant. Ground warfare just isn't on anymore. Now, that doesn't mean to say you can set your pack on me. I've been too long at the game to make any grand protest. You'll be seeing Sergeant Moggs tomorrow, sir. Moggs, yeah. I don't be too hard on him, Colonel. None of this was his fault, you know. Uh -huh. With your permission, sir. Mm -hmm. Good night.
So when I go into court tomorrow, I shall just have to play it by ear. Sir Timothy was somewhat of a disappointment. Somewhat, yes. And the fact that he's a friend of yours can't have made the situation any easier. No, no, it didn't. Well, take his advice. Be warned off. We'll go along with the system, you mean? It's wiser. Perhaps. Well? No, not without a struggle. I'm not going to have my position as a magistrate used in that way. An upright judge fighting the devious and shadowy world of espionage. Am I being pompous? No, no, darling, no. If that's how you feel, you must stick with it. But just be careful, that's all. You think I'm tilting at windmills, don't you? Oh, probably you are. But somebody's got to play Quixote. Somebody's got to make a stand. Yes. It seemed a good idea at the time, but now I'm not so sure. What did? Well, I conned Frank into giving the story to the Nationals. You... I'll get it. Hello? Yes, I'm with James now. What? Why can't they? So there's nothing we can do. Yes, all right, I'll tell him. Thanks for trying, anyway. Bye. Who was that? It was Frank Walters. The Home Office have put a D-notice on the Benson story. Well, that's all we need, isn't it? That means that no newspaper in the land can print a word. And it means that my hearing in court tomorrow and the subsequent trial are going to be held in secret. It means something else, James. What? It means that when you go into court tomorrow, you're going to be alone. Very much alone. You'll be by the Quiet, please. Captain Benson, you're charged under Section 3 of the Official Secrets Act of 1920, as amended in 1939. German warfare. Three years. Blake of 42. Where does your loyalty lie? Said documents being the sole property of the Crown. Mr. Samson. Yes, sir. We had a request from the prosecution to clear the court. No, sir. Well, I don't understand it. I thought that's what they were worried about, hearing the evidence in open court. Now, perhaps they're hoping that you won't insist on direct evidence. I still think yes, that's the Yes, yes, I know you do, Mr. Sampson. Sir Hilary, in view of the confidential nature of this case, I'm prepared at this moment to accept a motion from the Crown that the court should be cleared. I don't think that will be necessary, Your Worship. As you wish. Carry on, Mr. Sampson. Captain Benson, you have heard the charges made against you. How do you plead? Guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Could you repeat that, please, Captain Benson? Guilty. In view of the defendant's plea, Your Worship, I submit that no evidence of guilt is required at this stage. He's quite right, sir. They can keep the evidence for the trial. Yes, I know, Mr. Sampson. Captain Benson, if you've nothing further to say, I've no alternative but to commit you for trial at a court of assize. On the question of bail, Your Worship, owing to the serious nature of this case, the Crown strongly opposes any request for bail. Bail is denied, Mr. Jackson. The court is adjourned. The court is adjourned. Satisfactory, sir? No fuss at all? No, no fuss. I must say, it was the last thing I expected. I wonder why he made that plea. Not as perfectly simple. They made a deal with him, that's all. Three years or 14. Still, he was guilty. Guilty? Of what? <laughs>